Join Kids Hat Family. Tia, did you know Jack pushed Henry today while playing? Poor Henry didn't say a word, but later someone pushed Jack and he hurt himself. Jack got very upset and said sorry to Henry because he felt he did him wrong. Well, it's good that Jack realized his mistake when the same happened to him. What goes around comes around. What do you mean by that, Tia? Well, I will tell you a story of the cave princess. The cave princess. Once upon a time, there lived a cruel duo of a mother and a daughter. They had a maid named Catherine who was treated terribly. They made her do unnecessary work and tired her. Catherine, come here and put the shoes on my feet. Look at your ragged clothes. Oops, now you can't wear them anymore. You pile of gunk. Come here and clean this. But ill-fated Catherine had no other choice but to work because she had poor old parents to feed. One day, Catherine was sent into the woods to collect lumber and catch a fish for dinner. But little Catherine had to carry all the heavy lumber by herself. Come here, you silly fowl. Go to the woods and bring some lumber and fish before dusk. But, but miss, uh, I would need some help to carry the heavy lumber. Get lost and do what I told you, you muck. Oh, okay. She packed herself some leftover loaf of bread and went into the woods. Oh God, please help me find a way. How will I carry all the lumber on my back? I am so tired of walking already. Dear, what happened to you? Who did this to you? Here, I can share my lunch with you. I have a long, long journey to make, so I saved some for myself. I hope you don't mind. Take care, doggo. I will see you on my way back home. Oh, poor dog. Have this too. I will find myself something to eat. You need this more than I do. And so she feeds the dog with all that she had. She still had a long journey to make. Poor Catherine had no other option but to go on in the scorching heat of the sun. As she moved ahead, she saw a flash of white light where the dog was. It turned into a handsome young prince on a beautiful black horse. Catherine got startled and started running. I didn't do anything. Please don't harm me. I just fed a starving dog. Oh, please stop. I won't harm you. You are so beautiful and kind. You just turned the spell backwards. The witch of the dark cave cast a spell on me. She turned me into a dog. 
I have been in the woods for 25 years of my life, living the life of a dog. But how did I turn back the spell? I just fed a poor dog. The witch gave me a spell that I won't turn back into a prince until and unless a person with a kind heart and generous intentions feeds me food and gives me love. There is only a family of two women that live in the woods. They have always been inhuman to me. They threw food at me and kicked me when I didn't eat. But you, you fed me with kindness and generosity and love. Oh, I am sorry about whatever happened to you, sir. Those women must be evil at heart. But anyways, you must forgive them. God is always watching out for the kind. Indeed they are. What are you doing in this awful heat? I am going to collect some lumber and fish for my missus. Do you live in that old cottage? Yes, sir. I work for them. Oh girl, you work for the brutal women. Never mind. Do you want to see something unbelievable? Come, climb the horse. Uh, I have to get home before dusk. Don't you worry about that. I got you. They climb on the beautiful black horse and go deeper into the woods, away from the evil world. They stop by right at the opening of a dark cave. Come on, let's walk inside. It's pretty dark in here. I am so scared. Hold my hand, Catherine. They walk inside the cave and as they move further, they enter a beautiful land full of butterflies, flowers and rabbits. There stands the princess, beautiful and enormous palace. They walk inside and the prince proposes to marry Catherine. Her eyes are full of joy as she holds his hand and says yes. There is a flash of colourful lights and the whole kingdom lightens up. There is flavoursome food being served at the dinner table and a dozen of servants in the palace. Suddenly, Catherine spots her missus. Miss Katie, what are you doing here? Uh, hello, Princess Catherine. How may I serve you? Uh, uh, please don't mind. My lord, Here's your platter of food. What is happening here? They are my missus. Why are they working for me? My beloved, this is your world and your kingdom now. God has rewarded you for your kindness and humbleness. This palace is yours. These servants work for you. They are the people who did you wrong. They are paying for what they did to you. But. I don't want them to work for me. I am very uncomfortable. They are my missus. I used to work for them. Princess Catherine, that is very kind of you. How are you so humble, generous and forgiving even to the people who did you so wrong? My dear Prince, I believe what goes around comes around. Everyone has to pay for their deeds. It is not me who would decide their punishment by God. I want to forgive my missus even if they mistreated me. I know I will get a better reward than doing wrong to those who wronged me in the first place. Oh my dearest, you are the most humble of all. Catherine turns into the cave princess and the couple lives happily ever after in their peaceful little world away from the cruel world. Oh Tia, what a beautiful story it was. It surely proves what goes around comes around. Yes Tofu, it surely does. Tia, I got a school project to make but the teacher challenged us to use only the materials available in nature to build the project model. Well, that's very good. We must consume the things provided to us by nature 
just like the nature princess did. Who is she? The nature princess. Not very long ago, in a faraway village, there lived a poor little girl named Iris. She lived with her mother and an elder sister. They were not very well off, but still managed to keep their stomachs full and their hearts happy. Iris was a very kind girl who loved spending time in the nature. She used to talk to birds and rabbits and play with butterflies to keep her lonely heart happy. Because she was the poorest in her friend circle, she was often pulled down by other girls. Iris, what's in your hair? Uh, what? It's dirt, of course. Maybe you should tell your mother to bathe you and buy you a new dress. <laughs> I bathe every day and I don't need a new dress. I get dirt on me because I play all day in the nature. This is so not very kind of you. I'm leaving now. Yeah, go away. And so teary-eyed Iris runs towards her home. As soon as she sees her mother, she falls into her arms and starts sobbing bitterly. Oh, my sweet pea. Who dare bring tears to your pretty blue eyes? Am I not pretty, Ma? Tell me. Oh, my darling, you are the prettiest and I love you so much. You are gold, my child. Really? Am I? Yes, my pudding. Iris smiles widely and kisses her mother. She then hops into the garden to play with the rabbits. Mr. Rabbit, Ma says I'm the prettiest. Do you think so too? Yes, little Iris. You are the most beautiful girl inside out in the entire village. That is why we all love you so much. You are so kind to us, unlike the other kids who always tease us. Oh, thank you. Just when Iris was playing in the garden, the king's men arrived with an invitation. It was Prince Noah's birthday and everybody in the village was invited to the royal palace for celebrations. I will buy the most expensive gown in the market. And I will buy that trending pink gown. Oh, how graceful and elegant I would look. Iris, what will you wear? The same old rugged skirt? <laughs> I am not going to the party. Iris walks away sadly. Everybody was quite in the mood to prep up for the party. But Iris's heart was weighed down because she was poor and couldn't afford a new nice dress. She walked away quietly into the woods and sat under a clover tree and started sobbing bitterly. Oh God, why me? I want to go to the party too and wear the prettiest gown and dance the night away. Just as Iris was crying, a sparkling four-leaf clover landed softly on her frock. To her surprise, the clover tree spoke to her. Oh, how can a kind and pretty little girl cry under my shade? What happened, dear girl? I don't have a pretty dress to wear to the palace. All the other kids are getting dressed in the best clothes and all I have is a couple of rugged dresses. Oh sweet child, your heart is heavy, isn't it? All your answers are right there in that garden. Go and find it. In the garden? Hello there, Mr. Tree. Ah, uh, what's in the garden? Let me see. Iris walks up to the garden and all her animal friends gather around her and sing a merry song. Little Iris, we want to help you since you have always been so kind to us. Take some of my fur for your dress. And you can take few of my feathers too. You healed my broken wings once. And you can take us with you. We will sit on your gown and flutter merrily. 
we'll shed some petals for your gown. Oh, thank you everybody. You all are so kind to me. I will never forget this. Go little Iris, go. Show the world how beautiful you are inside out. You don't need all the expensive things in the world to look pretty. You are gorgeous just the way you are. You have been so kind to us and we love you. And so Iris runs to her mother with the feathers and petals and everything pretty. She tells her mother to sew her a gown. At first she seemed confused but she ended up stitching the prettiest gown for her daughter. Finally, the day of the party had arrived as Iris wore the beautiful gown. Oh my child, look at you. You look like a princess. My nature princess. Thank you, Ma. I must go now. As Iris walked out of the house, she twirled around with happiness and a bunch of colorful butterflies sat all over her gown, making it even prettier. Thank you, my sweet, sweet friends. It's time to go now. Iris hopped her way to the royal palace and as she entered, everybody had their eyes glued on to Iris. Look at her gown. It must be costly. She is so gorgeous. It's Iris. All the other girls look at her with envy as Princess Noah glances at her. He asks her for a dance. Hello, beautiful. Would you do the honor of dancing with me? Yes, sir. I would love to. Oh, girl, you are the prettiest one that I have ever laid my eyes on. And so Iris and Noah danced the night away. They couldn't get their eyes off each other while everybody couldn't get their eyes off the couple. Iris proved that money doesn't make you a pretty person. It is kindness and humbleness that makes you pretty inside out. Wow, Tia! Iris was a good person and it is all that matters, right? Yes, Tofu! Iris was a pretty girl at heart. It is the most important thing. Look at Jake. He is as tall as a giraffe. Yes, isn't he weird? You guys were very rude to Jake. He was crying. You shouldn't have been mean to him. What happened, Tofu? Yeah, they made fun of Jake because he is the tallest of us all. That's very bad. Every person is unique and no one deserves to be treated like that. This just reminded me of the story of Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer Rudolph was a tiny reindeer with a big bright nose. Everybody made fun of him and so Rudolph was always very sad. Look friends, he's here. The reindeer with a nose as big as a light bulb. The children will scream looking at his big nose. And oh! Look at his tiny little feet. They must be of no use. As everybody teased him, Rudolph started sobbing and ran to Santa. Sir, please assign me some work. Oh my child, you are too small to pull the sledge for me. Look at me. I am so big. I can try, sir. Of course, my child. I will call you when I need you. As it was Christmas Eve, Santa was planning to load the gifts on his sledge and leave. Suddenly, a huge snowstorm hit 
and the sky turned completely dark. Oh no! How will I deliver gifts to the children? They must be waiting for me in so much excitement. What do I do now? Just then, Santa remembered about Rudolph and his big bright red nose. Rudolph! Rudolph! I need your help. I'm here. I'm here. The brave little Rudolph and other reindeers took Santa through the thick dark fog as Rudolph's big bright nose was shining like a light. Together as a team they helped Santa deliver the gifts. Ho ho ho! I am so proud of you all, especially you Rudolph. You proved yourself today Rudolph. I am so sorry for being mean to you just because you look different. I knew Rudolph could do wonders. I am so happy. As the sun rose and the fog cleared out, Santa presented Rudolph with a medal of honor for his bravery. Cheers to Rudolph. You did an amazing job, my child. Thank you everybody. All the reindeers cheered for Rudolph as Santa gave him a gold medal. Rudolph gleamed with happiness. We are so proud to have you on our team, Rudolph. From that day on, everybody loved him and nobody ever made fun of Rudolph. Tofu, what are you looking for? Tia, I am the shortest kid in my class. All my friends are so tall. And look, I have got such dark hair. I don't like my hair and my nose is so small too. Oh no, Tofu, you look perfectly fine. I hope I do. Of course you do. You don't have to worry. Let's go. We are getting late for school. I can't find my shoes, dear. Look under your bed. I can see a pair of shoes there. Not these. I have worn these shoes so many times. Well, you can wear the other pair. I don't like the color at all. Tofu, come on. Why are you being so ungrateful today? Have you heard the story of the little Christmas tree? No. Tell me the story, please. Tell me, Tia, please. The Little Christmas Tree This story is about a young Christmas tree that wanted to grow up soon. The little tree never liked it when someone reminded it about its size. It didn't take its ferns too. And so, every day, the little tree used to complain about the way it looked. Ah, uh, who has such brown little ferns? I want to grow up so big and green and mushy one day. You look fine. Stop being so ungrateful every day. Oh no, look, the woodcutters are here to take us. It's Christmas already? I hope they cut me this time so that I can be decorated. I would look so beautiful with the Christmas decorations all over me. The little tree swirls with happiness. Just then, a big woodcutter comes and cuts the tree. He loads it on his truck and carries it away to a nursery. Hello, Miss Emily. I have bought you the finest of fir trees. This Christmas will give you the best sale, I promise. Thank you, John. Oh, look at this little tree. It is so cute. Indeed, it is. 
Hello, can we see some fir trees? Yes, these are some of the finest trees. I just got them loaded five minutes ago. Oh, that's great. We'll take the big one. Mama, Mama, can I have the little tree please? Of course, my dear. We will get the little tree too. And the family took both the trees home. They cut off the brown edges of the trees, watered it and decorated it with lights, candies, coloured jingle bells and lots of gifts. Oh Lord, I look so gorgeous. I look the prettiest now. The little tree was so happy after being decorated. It swayed with happiness as the little kids played around it on Christmas Eve. The next day, both trees were carried to the attic as they were of no use now. There, the trees were kept in the dark and were lonely. I was in the forest, unhappy that I was so short and nobody would decorate me on Christmas. When someone finally decorated me, I felt so happy and confident. And look at me now, I am of no use. They abandoned me. My dear friend, we must always be grateful for what we have in life. We must always be happy and appreciate the little things in life. You are right. I learnt my lesson. Oh, I can hear some people outside the attic. I think they are here to take us away. Oh Lord, no, save us. Just then, the door of the attic opens and two men carry both the trees into a yard and burn them off. That's how the life of the little tree ends. It longed for more things in life and was always ungrateful until one fine day it died unhappy. Wow, Tia, that was an inspiring story. Indeed, Tofu, now you know why we must always be grateful for the little things that we have in this life? Yes, I do know now. Thank you, Tia. Miss, uh, let me help you. Thank you, young boy. This is so kind of you. I have been trying to cross the road for so long, but no one came to help me. It's my pleasure, Miss. Here. This is for you. You have been really kind to me. Oh, chocolates! Thank you so much. Wow, Tofu! I am so proud of you. When did you grow up to be so kind and caring, huh? You remind me of a beautiful story. Really? Narrate it to me, Tia, please. Kindness is beautiful. Once upon a time, there lived a ferocious lion in a dense jungle. One day, when the lion was asleep under the cool shade of a tree, a mouse ran up and down on the lion, playing around thinking that the king of the jungle was in a deep sleep. Is asleep. I can do whatever I want. <laughs> uh, come here, you little guy. I will eat you up. Oh no! Please leave me, sir. I promise I will help you one day for your kindness. Ha ha ha! You are too tiny to be of any help to me. 
There you go. The mouse squeals with horror and runs away. One day, the mouse was pacing up and down looking for food when he heard the lion crying for help. Help me! Somebody please help me! These cruel humans are here to take me away. Oh sir, I found you. Just be patient. I am here to help you. The mouse swiftly nibbles the net off and sets the lion free. The lion bounces in the jungle with happiness. From that day, the lion and the mouse become best friends. Thank you, my dear friend. I am sorry for grabbing you the other day. You have been very kind to me. I told you, sir. I will repay you for your kindness one day. It is said, when you show kindness to others, there comes a day when you reap the rewards for it later. For your favorite rhymes, stories and more, join Kids Heart family. Subscribe here.